Hello, nerds! Nerds for Yang. This week, because of the shootings in the news, I thought it was appropriate to take a deeper look into the gun issue in the United States and Yang's policies on gun safety. And so what I'm going to do for this video is really focus on a lot of the statistics and charts, both from some progressive news uh, media and sort of independent research uh, think tanks like Pew, but also uh, from the NRA's website as well. So we can kind of take a look from a few different perspectives, use that as a lens to evaluate Yang's policies. Here's the first chart. This one basically helps you understand while we might think from our friends and maybe our kind of social media bubble that everybody is for more gun safety, it turns out that it's way more divided than you might expect. So in this chart, you can see how there was a certain uptick in the red line, which is 18 to 20 year olds who believe we should do more to control gun ownership. But that bluish green line is still close to the 40% mark. It's not like everyone in the country believes there should be more gun control. Uh, even for younger people, it turns out that it's probably closer to 60-40. This next chart looks at the proportion of deaths from guns. And what you'll see here is that suicides are by far the leading cause and then followed by homicides. And mass shootings in 2016, quote unquote, only were 71 out of the 38,658 deaths. So certainly mass shootings capture the country's attention and everyone is moved by them. But actually gun related suicides and gun homicides are really the, the much larger cause of death in the country. Over time, this chart looks at how gun-related suicides have been going up year over year since around 2006. Gun-related homicides actually had gone down from 2006, 2007, all the way until 2014, and then have since uh, jumped up in 2015 and 16. TLDR, both gun-related suicides and homicides are up year over year. Now here's a screenshot from the NRA's uh, official website where they shared sort of their positions on highly contested issues. One of them is around background checks. And essentially the NRA opposes expanding firearm background check systems because they argue background checks do not stop criminals from getting firearms because some proposals to do so would deprive individuals of due process of law and because the NRA opposes firearm registration. Similarly, they argue that most mass shooters, including those inspired by Islamic terrorist groups, pass background checks to acquire firearms. So their position is no need to do anything more on background checks. They don't work. They don't stop bad people from getting guns. When it comes to waiting periods, the NRA is opposed to expanding them or introducing new waiting periods. Their position is these are arbitrary impositions with no effect on crime or suicide. There's no evidence that waiting periods reduce suicide, homicides, or mass shootings. And the average time to crime for firearms traced by the ATF in 2017 was over nine years. So having people wait before they get their hands on a gun in the NRA's point of view will not solve the problem. The NRA is also opposed to any increased requirements for no-fly list participants. Their position is under the current system, law enforcement is notified every time a person on the list attempts to purchase a firearm and then law enforcement makes a case-by-case -case decision on the appropriate follow-up for each circumstance. And their belief is that any introduction of new restrictions on people who are on the no-fly list is simply a measure to distract from President Obama's failed foreign policy. So that's the NRA's point of view. I'm not going to go in point by point on their positions. I will say that if they don't believe waiting periods and background checks work and they don't think any additional restrictions for no-fly list work, it would be great if they proposed something to address the issue of increasing gun deaths in the country. I think their position is, I don't know what their position is on how to reduce it. Basically, it seems like they're just saying nothing works. But if anyone knows of specific 
actionable proposals from the NRA. Like, wouldn't it be great if the NRA came up with some ideas and all different sides of this issue came up with ideas and we found some things that we can all agree on because, you know, I think we all just want to solve the problem. Speaking of what gets support from different perspectives, here is a survey done by Pew in 2017 of U.S. adults, and it tries to compare Republicans versus Democrats. And it turns out that there are actually policies that both sides agree to. As an example, 89% of both parties agree that preventing the mentally ill from purchasing guns is a good idea. 82% of Republicans and 85% of Democrats do believe that barring gun purchases by people on the no-fly or watch list is a good idea, in spite of the NRA's position. 77% of Republicans and 90 90% of Democrats believe that background checks should be done for private sales and at gun shows. 54% of Republicans and 80% of Democrats believe that banning assault-style weapons is a good idea. 56% of Republicans and 84% of Democrats are in favor of creating a federal database to track gun sales. This is, again, in spite of the NRA's position uh, being opposed to gun registration. There are, to be fair, also a lot of things where the Republicans and Democrats don't agree. They don't agree on concealed carry. They don't agree on arming teachers in K-12 through schools. They don't agree on uh, shortening waiting periods. They don't agree on uh, concealed carry without a permit. So maybe we just say, okay, let's not focus on what we don't agree on and can get something done where we already have agreement, at least for the top three, for mentally ill, no-fly lists, and background checks for private sales. That's 77% and above support from Republicans. Now, you might wonder, like, well, why haven't we done, done this? Part of it could be money. This is an analysis of money given by gun rights advocates versus gun control advocates in campaign contributions to representatives in government, uh, outside spending in general, and then lobbying, actual lobbying activities. And as you see here in campaign contributions, gun rights advocates spent $42 million between 90 and 2018, gun control 4.3, so a 10 to 1 ratio. For outside spending from 2010 to 2018, you have gun rights spending $113 million gun control 12.5 million. In terms of paid lobbying of representatives from 98 to 2018, gun rights spent 149 million and gun control 21 million. So if you add it all up, gun rights spending for these periods and against these categories has been $304.7 million for gun rights and $37.8 million for gun control. So eight to one ratio in terms of money going into the system to advocate one position. Now, you might be wondering like, okay, well, what's Yang's position on all this? Let's start with the high level goals. He wants to create a common sense licensing policy requiring investment and safety precautions taken by the owners, prevent dangerous individuals from owning guns, encourage innovation in firearm personalization and safety, and enhance mental health resources available to people who need help. Specifically, with regards to gun ownership, he wants to introduce a three-tier licensing program, kind of like how you have to have a separate driver's license for a car versus a motorcycle versus a tractor trailer versus you know, heavy construction equipment, and that has all kinds of training and certification required. For the Yang gun safety proposal, tier one is basic hunting rifles and handguns. You would need to pass a background check, you would need to pass a safety class, and you need to provide a receipt for your gun locker or trigger lock. That's it. For tier two, if you need a semi-automatic rifle, you would need the tier one license for at least a year, be at least 21 years of age, and then pass an advanced firearm safety class. Tier three, if you need an automatic weapon or any kind of advanced weaponry, the main things are banning high capacity magazines, requiring submission of fingerprints and DNA to the FBI. This is probably a controversial one since I think a lot of us are not in favor of the government having too much data, but this only would apply to tier three, so for advanced and automatic weapons. You'd also need to submit to a gun locker inspection to ensure that it can house the weapons and you have a gun locker, and then undergo yearly refresher trainings on the use of these firearms. Lastly, 
This applies to everyone, anyone with a history of violence, a history of domestic abuse, violent mental illness would be restricted from receiving a license even for tier one. So for those of you who currently own firearms, you might be thinking like, oh, what does that mean for me? As a side note, I own a gun as well, a handgun. And so I would be grandfathered in with their current license and for the one year requirement if I want to go to tier two. So anyone in tier one is grandfathered in if you already have a handgun or basic hunting rifle. You would also receive a one-time good gun owner tax credit for adhering to additional requirements implemented by the new system and be allowed a tax write-off for the purchase of any equipment required to adhere to the new standard. So not a huge change for existing gun owners unless you're in tier two. If you do have a semi-automatic rifle, then you would have to pass that advanced firearm safety class and be 21 or older. And then if you wanted to be in tier three, you would have to register your gun and fingerprints and DNA with the FBI, have an annual inspection of your gun locker and do yearly classes. Again, that tier three sounds like a lot, but that is for automatic advanced weaponry. That is not for your run-of-the-mill garden variety Glock handgun. It's not for even a AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle. Beyond that, there are also Yang policies around the gun industry. One is prohibiting the manufacture and sale of bump stocks, silencers, incendiary or exploding ammunition. Also the prohibition of grenade launcher attachments. He also wants to create a federal safety guideline for gun manufacturers and distribution, similar to what the federal government did for car manufacturers around you know, three-point safety belts and uh, airbags and things like that. There would also be a federal buyback program and investments in more robust mental health infrastructure, as well as increased funding to National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, increased funding to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and Suicide Prevention, and fund mindfulness programs in schools and correctional facilities and invest heavily in law enforcement training to de-escalate. So in general, I could argue that gangs, gun safety proposals generally are around one this licensing protocol for tier one two and three weapons background checks safety classes gun safes or trigger locks or super advanced weaponry or automatic weapons dna and fingerprint and then these more horizontal approaches around increased mental health infrastructure funding for national suicide prevention department of veterans affairs suicide prevention programs mindfulness in schools and correctional facilities and police de-escalation. So it's kind of an all of the above holistic approach. It seems pretty reasonable to me. I think the most controversial things will be the fingerprint and DNA, DNA for uh, automatic weapons with the FBI. In fairness, as a, a little bit of a libertarian, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And at the same time, if you have full automatic machine gun, well, Hey, I don't know why you need one. And if you do need one, then maybe we should, should know who you are. Lastly, in terms of the general statistics on gun safety, I thought for me the most surprising thing was how big suicide is as a problem in the United States and, and gun-involved suicides uh, being the number one cause of gun-related deaths. And then homicides, obviously, being the second biggest one. And these... Mass shootings are really a very small percentage of the total deaths in the country. So that was surprising. And I think spending some time on the NRA website, it was interesting. I mean, I think there are definitely good points around why some common policies may not be the one size fits all like, oh, this one thing is going to solve all our problems. And maybe to their point, there are some things that probably won't make that much of a difference. I do wish they would propose things that would address that chart that shows gun-related suicides and gun-related homicides going up year over year. I don't know if doing nothing is an is a, a effective approach either. With that, hopefully this was helpful to you. Yang's for licensing, like driving a car, and he's for more mental health investment, suicide prevention, mindfulness, police de-escalation. I think these are all reasonable things that sound very pragmatic. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below and hope this video was helpful. If you are not a subscriber, feel free to subscribe. I do a new Yang related video every week. And as you can tell, I don't just talk about Yang, but I try and kind of give a broader coverage. If you are on Twitter and Facebook, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Nerds for Yang and at Facebook at Nerds for Yang. 
So with that, we will see you next week. In the meantime, Nerd Power. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang. Yeah, yeah. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang 2020. Yang Gang. Yeah, I want a thousand a month, a thousand a month, I want a thousand a month, a thousand a month. Let's get this spread. Freedom dividend. Are all y'all paying attention? Automation gonna sweep the nation. Unless we get him in. Andrew Yang, 2020 freedom dividend. Yang gang, 2020. Yang gang, 2020. Yang gang, 2020. Yang gang. Yeah, yeah. First we get this money, yeah. then on 420, yeah, yeah, yeah. he gonna give some high fives to some high guys. Okay. Decriminalize marijuana, so we can smoke, smoke if we wanna. Down with the opioid trend, up with the mental health thing, yeah. Math, yo, it's just math, yo, it's simple, math, yo, can you do math? Yo, yo. Eliminate super packs. Color stars making stacks. Student loan forgiveness plan. Thank you. Cops wearing cameras and <laughs> climate change is real again. Science rules. Teachers bring a wholesome bread. <laughs> Medicare for every citizen. That's nice. Andrew Yang, 2020 freedom dividend. Yang Gang, 2020. Yang Gang, 2020. Yang Gang, 2020. Yang Gang. Yeah, yeah. Yang Gang, 2020. Yang Gang, 2020. Yang gang, 2020. Yang gang, yeah, yeah. Yo, a vote for anyone else is like negative a thousand dollars from your pocket every month.